Energy suppliers across the board are posting record levels of profits for the first half of 2023, and Ofgem currently have a consultation where they plan to increase the profits under the price cap for energy suppliers. Here's my thoughts. Hi everyone, I'm Richard Winstone with Over 50s Money. If you want to keep up with the Ofgem consultation videos I'm posting or any other energy videos, please like and subscribe to the Over 50s Money YouTube channel. Press the little bell to turn on the notifications and you'll be notified every time I post. Thank you. Okay, so yesterday we found out that British Gas has recorded um, almost a billion pounds in profits for the first half of this year, which is almost 10 times their previous record, which is just insane. Um, Ofgem have said this is a one-off due to a cost allowance in the price cap that allows energy suppliers to recoup losses from the previous years, um, and that shouldn't happen again. But they're also planning to increase profits under the price cap um, by a further £10 per customer per year. Now that £10 is actually just in the first price cap period. Um, as the price cap continues to drop, that £10 will be a bigger number. Um, if we go back to, if we get back to a point where we were two years ago, where we're down to £1,000 price cap, then Ofgem's new formula for working out profit would give energy suppliers roughly £15-20 per customer, more than what the current formula does. Now, most of you watching this will know that I've had a petition out against Ofgem since September last year, and that petition was to get Ofgem to change the uh, profit formula in the price cap because it scales with costs. So during the crisis, we saw the profit element go from £22 per household to, I think it was £76, £78 per household. So they were getting almost four times as much profit per household throughout the crisis. Um, obviously, I thought Ofgem were listening, and I've been saying that over the last six months because they invited me to these monthly meetings and they took on board a lot of the, the inputs that we gave. But their latest consultation proposes a new formula which increases profits for energy suppliers. And when I asked them about it, their response was that under certain circumstances, it does decrease the amount of profit suppliers would get in comparison to the current formula. And doing the maths on that, it was very easy to work out that if the price cap goes above £4,000 ever again, which is done once for one three-month period, if it ever goes above £4,000 again, we will be better off by a few pence per year. Um, which to me just seems like very flawed logic. I don't understand why they think that's a good idea um, or why they think that's justifiable. They also go on to say in their documentation that they're trying to make the energy suppliers more profitable so that the energy industry is more investable and that they believe energy suppliers have been making losses over the last uh, four years since the price cap was implemented and therefore these adjustments are necessary. Over the last year and a half to two years, they've made maybe a dozen adjustments to the price cap either adding new allowances or adjusting allowances that are already there. And each of these have increased our costs. I think I worked it out that we'd probably be about £400 a year for the median use household, £400 a year better off right now if Ofgem had made no changes in the last two years. So, yeah, they're doing a lot to try and correct the mistakes of their past, I guess, is the way they're looking at it. I personally disagree with almost everything they've said, including that, off, uh, that suppliers are making losses. Um, you can watch the video I posted yesterday about that. If you look at other news articles that were released yesterday and today, Scottish Power have gone from making a loss last year to making half a billion in profit this year, uh, for the first six months of this year, sorry. Um, and bearing in mind, remember, British Gas's record half-year profits before were 98 million. Other suppliers are now getting half, half a billion in profit. I think Eon's got almost 2 billion euros in profits for the first half of this year, but that does include their generation, not just their domestic supply arm of their business. Um, if you want to look at generation as well for companies like British Gas, they've got over £2 billion in profit for the first half of this year. The £969 million was just for their domestic energy supply, so supplying households. Um, yeah, loads of uh, energy suppliers are posting record levels of profits for the first half of this year. Um, the only ones I haven't seen are Octopus Energy, and if I'm being honest, I actually expect them to make a loss. I don't know if you're aware of this. Last year, at the back end of last year, during the peak of the crisis, Octopus Energy reduced their standard variable tariff by £50 per customer. They were the only supplier to do it, but they've got, they had, what, 3 million customers? So you're looking at £150 million less revenue that they were getting compared to other companies. 
So actually, arguably, maybe they are still getting uh, profits, but they won't be as high as the other companies. Um, yeah, I'm I'm flabbergasted as to how Ofgem are justifying this, saying it's a one-off thing when it's not. Even British Gas said only half of their record levels of profits were from this recoup, if you will. Um, I, I don't agree that this will be a one-off cost. I haven't seen the backwardation allowance, which is what they're claiming is the one-off cost, come off of our bills yet. And I believe they're still reviewing as to whether it will stay. Um, on top of that, they've got the market stabilization in charge uh, market stabilization charge in place, which is killing all competition because it means any new supplier, any supplier you switch to will have to pay your old supplier for taking you off their hands, basically. Um, they have to compensate your old supplier because they won't have your income anymore, which is something that's never been in place before. And they're calling it a stabilization charge and all it's stabilizing is the energy switching market and it's stabilizing at a point of zero. There is no switching market or very small switching market because it costs energy suppliers to get customers and they're having to pay their competitors for those customers. It's just, yeah, that needs to go quickly and Ofgem apparently aren't planning to remove it until April next year. So don't expect fixed rate tariffs to come back in abundance um, over this winter. I know we've seen a couple come in and they're fairly heavily priced. They're still quite expensive. There are a few like Utility Warehouse that I think they're coming in £150 below the price cap which is good, but then that's a risk because if the price cap goes down in winter, then you might be worse off. Um, we're not seeing really competitive fixed rate tariffs yet, and we won't until this market stabilization charge is gone. So the purpose of this video is to highlight that it's not just British Gas. You know, I, I tore into them a little bit yesterday, um, but it is a market-wide problem, and it's off gems problem. And to ask all of you to contact your local MPs, I don't think I pushed that point hard enough yesterday, and I think... Ofgem aren't paying attention, government need to hear it. Um, we've done a lot over the last six months to tell Ofgem that their price cap was too high. They didn't listen. Now British Gas have a billion pounds in profits and Ofgem are going, oh yeah, sorry, it's a mistake. It's a one-off. Don't worry about it. We are worried about it. We're worried about it because these are our homes that we have to heat in winter. And I know we're in the, the middle of summer right now, but winter's never that far away. They're already, Ofgem have been making plans for winter for the last six months. They're always planning for the next winter a year ahead. So any decisions that are being made about our future bills have probably already been made, um, which is terrible. So, yeah, get in contact with your local MPs. Um, again, I'm not giving out a script on this one. Uh, it's not a consultation that I'm replying to. Um, and just tell them what you think about the energy crisis. Tell them that the actions need to be taken, that Ofgem need to be put in check, that the price cap mechanism is broken, um, and that suppliers should be having windfall taxes, like bigger windfall taxes. I don't know if all of you are aware of this. I know the windfall taxes was in place for uh, energy profits last year, um, but A, that was only on generation, and B, those generators still got tax cuts for investing in uh, renewable energy. So companies like Shell, who made billions upon billions of profit last year, paid almost zero tax to the UK. It was next to nothing. So I, I think there shouldn't be that allowance on tax for investing in renewables if they've also got windfall tax to pay because they're just offsetting that windfall tax by investing in renewables, which is going to get them more profits in the future. There was literally no penalisation for them last year, which is just awful. So yeah, contact your local MPs, tell them we want the government to do something about these profits and to rake them back and get them back in our pockets because otherwise we're just going to line shareholder profit uh, pockets again this winter. Um, as a brief side note, I do a lot of work on energy and I've had people contact me about taking on some other projects, some of which are in energy, some of which are in other fields. And I'm only taking on those that I think I can, I have the time and capacity to, to actually handle. So one project that I am taking on, um, which I started a petition for yesterday, um, and I've got a link for it in the description below. So if you want to get involved, please do sign the petition. That's just a real quick and easy way for you to show your support um, is against telecoms companies doing mid-contract uh, mid price rises. So we're um, petitioning to Ofcom to put in regulation that stops that practice. If you sign up for a two or three year fixed term contract, you shouldn't be forced to have two or three increases to your cost of that contract until the end of the term. It's not right, not for mobile phones, broadband, your TV packages, for none of it. You shouldn't, if it's a fixed term contract, it should be a fixed price for that fixed term. And what these telecoms companies do is they increase your price 
once a year by inflation plus randomly apparently it's just an industry standard there's no rule saying they can't do more or less it's just an industry standard plus 3.9 percent so for example if you're with three for your mobile phone bill your bill would have gone up by 14.4 percent this april because inflation was so high and you've got 3.9% on top of it. Some companies went up as high as 18.8%, which is just insane. If you sign a contract, your price should be fixed. I'll do a whole separate video on this petition. If you're interested in signing the petition or or getting kept up to date with it and how it goes, please look for the link in the description below. Sign it, share the petition around, get other people to sign it. I think it's a fairly basic regulation that Ofcom can put in that say, a customer signs a, a fixed term contract, their price is fixed for that contract. So they know exactly what they're paying across that two, three year period. All right, thanks everyone. Don't forget to uh, copy Over 50s Money into your emails to your local MPs. It's support over 50s money.com. Um, feel free to send me an email if you've got any questions. It's richard at over 50s money.com. I received a lot of emails yesterday. I'm going to go through and reply to them all today. Um, thank you all for your support. Like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Thank you.